Good morning, everyone. A few minutes late today. Hopefully I'm on a good channel. Let me pop. Where am I here? <laughs> oh, look, it just told me, do I want to get all live notifications <laughs> for my own video? What the, what the what, Facebook? <laughs> Facebook is so crazy. Oh, heavens. All right, let me make sure I put this on the top. Okay, pin the top. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Karen. Nice to see you all. Hi, Andrea. So I really just got a thing that said, do you want to get notifications when Rach the Stamper is live? Yeah, but I'm me. So that's a little crazy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Angie. Hi, Diane. Good morning, Emery. Hope you all are doing well today. Hi, Pam. Let me back this up and give myself a little bit of space. I was uh, a little late because I was homeschooling this morning. We were trying to get it done. It's supposed to be nice today. Good morning, Jane, Julie, Pam. Thank you guys so much for all the shares. I'm so happy you guys are here today. This is one of my favorite days. I'll take your notifications, right? I know that has never said that before. Isn't that the craziest thing? Hi, Rose. Real quick, I did not pick the name yet from last week for the fish um, make a splash. When we're finished today, I will pick it and then I'll post it onto uh, Facebook later. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Wanda. Kathy, good morning. Thank you all so much for joining me. It's so, so great to see you all. So great to use my brain and think. This is the one time a week I do it. I did go live twice last week on YouTube, in case you missed it, Friday during the day and then Saturday. And actually, I think I'm going to go live again this Saturday because I will be um, home by myself. So I'll get to do some crafting. Hi, Robin. So just one quick thing, in case you are getting ready to place an order from Stampin' Up, they're running a little behind on their shipping, okay? Just so you know, they are working a little bit different with the shifts, so it's taking a little longer to get orders, so please do be patient. It's all because of this COVID. They're doing it for safety measures to make sure that no one is cross-contaminating, no one's getting sick, all that kind of thing. There's Debbie with fame. I'm gonna live forever. I love seeing you, Debbie. You make me sing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys appreciate it or not, but it makes me happy. So what we're going to do today is a technique that I have never seen before. Maybe I have, but I, I've never done it. So it's going to be the first time I did it. Amy, you got yours? I know. Me too. I was so excited. And I'm going to do this technique and I have another fun one to do next Wednesday already. So I'm gonna, I need to write myself a note to remember what I was said today that I'm going to do. So I'll do it again next Wednesday. But there are two things. Before I forget, what are the names of the card stock envelopes? The ones I use maybe as opposed to the Stampin' Up! ones. If that's the case, I'll post a post on my blog. When I'm done, I will add that. Make myself a note. Hold on. If that's what you mean. And I'll wait for you to say yes. Can't wait for Stamp Club with all the crazy. I know. I miss Stamp Club so much. It's just not as fun with this virtual Stamp Club. Okay. Blog. Got a note. Okay. So, what I thought I would do before we do our card today is I'm going to show you a couple of cards and I don't have a lot. Oh, the one I store my card stock in that should be on the blog. So that's these, the clear ones. Um, I'll put a link again on Amazon. These are from Amazon. They are called jam zip folders and they're like nine and a half by maybe 11 and three quarters. Maybe sounds about right. And I remember Jam because I don't know if any of you in the 80s, um, we used to have things called Jams. And they were these crazy pants and my brother's warm. And so I cannot forget the name of the envelopes or um, Jam. So it's kind of funny. Okay. Okay. So 
What we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip you down. We're gonna go through these few cards. That way, in case maybe you didn't realize there's a stamp set that's retiring and you needed an idea or you thought it wasn't retiring and you're like, oh, but it is retiring. So I'm gonna share those with you. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go do the embossing watercolor pencil technique. <laughs> Don't worry about Mary, it's no problem. Thank you for sharing. And even if you hate it, thank you for sharing anyway. I'm just kidding, I know you weren't saying that. <laughs> But I'm going to flip you guys down because the thing that we're going to do today, again, I've never done it before, so I'm hoping it's going to work out correctly for me. Fingers crossed. It should be. It doesn't seem too terrible. There's two different ways that you can do it. I'm sure you could do a zillion ways, but there's two ways that I'm going to show you today, and I'm actually going to use two different stamp sets. The one I'm going to use, I kind of already have a thought in mind, and it's going to also tie back to the partial die cutting, but the other one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, thank you, I love that wall too. It's my favorite color, right? The other one, I'm going to let you guys pick. I have three stamp sets. One I'm definitely going to use, and then the other ones you guys can choose. So I'm going to flip you around. I know I love that. Actually, have that um, one. We have one wall like that in the uh, spare bedroom, too, because it's such a beautiful color. So it's like accent wall, and then everything else is a really light gray. Okay, so the camera is down. You put this away, and I'm gonna keep need to get my embossing gun ready. All right, so. Let me show you these. I'm just going to go through them quickly again in case. Now, one thing I wanted to show you <clears throat> for this one, it's just the mosaic paper is retiring, which is really pretty. Beautiful paper. This one is um, Tammy White's stamp set. I believe it's called Capture the Good. It's a cute stamp set. This was from a swap. So I'm going to just go through these slightly quickly. You can make a zillion different ones and I'm missing one. I have one of one and one of the other. But this one I made um, inspired by another demonstrator, the Moana card with this little girl here. Beautiful you. This is a great stamp set. It's very versatile. It's got a lot of really nice sentiments but fun Moana card. I will never ever ever get rid of this one. And along with that, this is another one I created with that too. With, with the this little piggy and I made the piggy to look like Pua. And then I used that old um, wood textures DSP to make the boat. These are two. And then this one actually also features, um, oh my goodness, I'm totally blanking on the name of it. This was from the Flamingo, which was a while ago, but that Flamingo stamp set had a lot of really pretty greenery in the background. This also uses the water from, I believe it was High Tide, but loved these cards. So these two cards are two of my absolute favorites. I actually made one of the Moana cards for that's not going to stay up there now for my niece and she loved it leave a little sparkle you guys know i absolutely love unicorns this was one using the tissue paper technique and i actually had another one but i mailed it to somebody for her birthday this week so i don't think she would be watching this but if you were sailor happy birthday really fun i know moana's long hair right Okay, uh, Magical Mermaid. I like this one too because it's just really, 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 really pretty. We use masking for the background of this for that black, the dots. And then we use embossing paste. And then we put a ton of shimmer on her. So she does look really much like Ariel with her red hair. And then we have Music from the Heart. And you guys remember we made these couple cards. They have vellum layovers. Really simple. And then one just with the music sheets. I also made a post-it note holder for my son's music teacher at school. So this was really fun when school was back in session. Verdant Garden I used for the background. I made a lot of cards. We actually made this one at Stamp Club too. We did a lot of cards with the Verdant Garden background. And then this also used the So Sentimental. I did hand cut out these little flowers here. That's them. So there's that one. And Wiggle Worm. This was always a cute one, especially for the kids. Just have a nice little repeating bug pattern, or you could uh, stamp it in the tone one tone and then die cut one of the bugs out. Cute as a bug. Really fun little stamp set to build some bugs. All right, so just have a few more and we will get started. This one I loved, and I don't think I got enough use of it, but I won't get rid of a lot of these stamp sets. I'm going to keep them. I just have to get some more storage. This one we did again with the um, embossing paste, and then we sprinkled the black 
uh, sparkle embossing powder on top and heat set it. This one was just a watercolor background. This one was like a photograph watercolor background. And then this one used the embossing paste and we tinted it with some of the seaside spray so it would look like water. Really, really fun. And, you know, I love this one because of Walt Disney. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. One of my faves. This one is a great stamp set for doing silhouette stamping. Enjoy life. All done in black. Another one we have is Morning Star. So the stamps, I shouldn't say the stamps, the star dies, they are not retiring, just this stamp set is. So the star dies will still be available. Morning Glory is really pretty. Oh my gosh, I have so many of these with the Royal Peacock, so I kind of limited down. But this one was one using the foil paper, the specialty foil paper. And then this one used just an embossed piece of the regular foil. I'm sorry, this was the DSP, the foil DSP. And this was the foil paper, but... Had the little gems there. Great card. Love that one. And I love this one too. I'll keep this forever because this has some wonderful sentiments. This is another one that's kind of going faster than I thought it would. Thanks for the laughs. This was a great stamp set just for the words. So this is another one I'll keep too. How did I get so lucky to have a friend like you? I made a lot of birthday cards with this one. And then we have For the Win. These, actually we made these... These are actually a couple different. I have to pull this out so I can show you. This one is just a, um, has a, oh my gosh, what am I calling these, Donna? I'm thinking of it. Shout out the name. I can't remember. Lord, I can't think what those little things are called, but Donna will chime in and tell me. I'm having a total mind blank right now. Wiggler, wobbler. That's it, a wobbler. And then this one we made as a slider card. So you can see it goes into the goal. So that was really fun. So this is a fun one if you have any kids in sports. It's really easy to punch this out with, I think it is the one and a quarter inch circle punch. Fits all of these sports balls perfectly. Really great. I made a lot of cards for soccer coaches and everybody with that one. One more that was one of my very favorites was Animal Outing. This is another one that's so cool. We did that mirror technique. I love doing this. We did one also with the Rhino in class, which was super fun. The dyes really go nicely with this. I know we don't have the paper any longer because it's retired, but if you do still have it, all the dyes will cut out the DSP. And then last but not least, the Crafting Forever. I made a lot of fun cards too with the scissors that were sliced in and then I cut them out and kind of stuck them in there. And Rainbow Stamper made my Mother's Day card with this. Isn't that sweet? Okay, so what we're gonna do today, let me put these down so I don't make a mess. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually start again with the Good Morning Magnolia. That's going to be our first card. And then for the second one, we can either do free as a bird. We can do the birds. Or we can do by the dock and we could do the dock. Now, one thing I will say, I think this will turn out better because it will have more color. But this could be really cool on the second piece of paper as well. So let just keep that in mind. What we're going to do, though, I'm going to show you what we're going to do first. Let me get him out. And I'm going to do the, the die cutting again, but I'm not going to do that part yet. So, pick that up. And, let's see. I want to make sure this measures. Looks a little bit big. So, I'm going to cut this down four and a quarter. All right. Now, I'm not going to... Um, score this yet because I'm still not 100% sure if I want to do it as a partial die cut like we did last time. I think I might, but I think this is going to be a bigger image. So I don't know which way. I think I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. So I'm going to put in a really light, just for the heck of it, because I wasn't going to originally do this. I'm going to put in a really light score line just so I kind of have an eyeball of where it is. I'm just pressing super light. Barely there. All right, so to do this technique, what you're going to need is your embossing buddy, which these are sold out, but I'm sure somewhere carries them. I'm not sure I haven't seen a replacement. I don't, 
um, exactly know the plan, but I know that we're going to need this. So you're going to need one of these if you don't have it. We're going to need Versamark ink. And we're going to use, for this one, we're going to use white embossing powder. So I'm going to get out my coffee filter, my embossing powder. You could also, if you wanted to keep it handy, where is mine, you could have a little paintbrush in case you want to dust anything off. But as long as you prep it well, you shouldn't have a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat gun on. And I'm going to put it to the side so it has... It can heat up and not annoy everybody. Let's see if I can put it in a place where it's not gonna light anything up. Okay, so I'm gonna just go over my black cardstock with my embossing buddy. And the reason I'm going over the whole thing is because this is a pretty large stamp. Then I'm going to take my Versamark, even though that has a stamp in it, it still works just fine. And I'm going to ink up the image. Now Versamark does stay tacky for a good long time. So you do have some time to work with this, but you don't want to wait forever. So what we're going to do is... So I have my embossing powder ready. So I have my image and I'm just gonna kinda decide, here is about the halfway mark. Just gonna decide where I wanna put it. I'm gonna go like this. And I probably, I wouldn't have gone off the edge here intentionally, I think I just dropped it and figured I would kinda go with it. So hopefully, oh, actually surprisingly it's on there. So I'm going to set this aside, and then I'm going to take my embossing powder, so this is white embossing powder, okay, so now, let me show you this just in case you've never done this before. Sally no worries it'll be here for you so now if you can't or if you have like some stray powder what you can do is you can take a little paintbrush kind of just dust it off all right so that looks pretty good so now I'm just going to heat set this so I'm going to, it's very hot, which is good because it should make the powder melt really fast. And the powder will become shiny. So if you can see the difference, let me turn this off for a second. If you can see the difference, this is a very matte looking, and then this is shiny. So hopefully that's showing, you can see the reflection there. So what you want the whole thing to be shiny. The other thing you want to be a little careful with, more so on white, if you were white embossing on white, is you want to keep your heat tool moving because the heat tool could singe the white powder and make it look yellow. And that's definitely not going to be a good look. This is strange. Looks like some of this. That's so weird. I've never had that happen before. Some of this is, I want to wait till this cools off just a little bit. So some of this has a lot of, and this is almost gone. I almost wonder if I didn't blow it off accidentally. So this isn't as white. So this is going to be a little bit of a pain only because it's not going to turn out as prettily as I thought it would originally. So I'm going to show you still what we were going to do, but we might have to end up doing another example. So basically what you're going to do is once this is nice and cool, which if you can touch it and you're not getting anything on your fingers, 
Now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab all these and all my pencils are out. So I have watercolor one and watercolor two pencils, but I just kind of have pulled them out so they're all accessible. So if you get both sets, there are quite a lot of colors. You can see there's a good amount of colors there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick just a couple. So I'm going to pick, this is early espresso. We'll use that for the stem. I'm going to pick pumpkin pie and daffodil delight for the center. And then for the actual um, magnolia, I'm going to do flirty flamingo and maybe a little bit of calypso coral. So I think I'm going to stop there. And then we need the leaves, old olive and granny apple green. So I'm going to put the rest of these just back in my little container for now. So what I'm going to do is, and again, it's not going to work so great up here because this is so weird. Look at that, how that's smudged. I did use a different embossing powder that I don't normally use, so maybe that's it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one of these leaves so you can see. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your watercolor pencil and you're going to just color on top of your embossing powder. And then kind of go in a little bit. I wouldn't say necessarily to go out. I guess you could. But you kind of want to keep it more a little inside the line. So you're kind of just going around. You follow the hole. Not really being neat. I'm just kind of going with it. And you can see there. Let me make sure this is. It's not quite bright enough in here yet this morning. There we go. But you can see it picks up the color, which is really neat. So I'm gonna to try to stay away from the edge of the petal because I don't wanna hit the petal. But worst case scenario, even if I end up because this side didn't take and I don't know how it's gonna look. That's why I was saying, I don't know if this part's gonna work so well, but we're gonna see. I can always do like a partial die cut and add this to something if I wanted to. I'm just going over the powder And then you can kind of add a little bit on the inside if you want. But it really looks cool with the black paper. So the other way I was going to do this was with crumb, uh, crumb cake or you could use craft cardstock if you still have some. Which I think would be really nice. The craft cardstock was definitely significantly thicker. So I think it will probably work really, really nicely on that. So I'm going to go up and try and do these two that don't have a lot. See what this looks like. And I'm going to switch. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to switch to a different embossing powder. Because this one was not stamping up. This was a different powder. Just goes to show you. Thought I was doing something that might work out better. And it didn't. So we'll try the other one as well and see. That doesn't look too bad. You just don't have quite as much of the white contrast. So there's that. And then you could, if you wanted to, that was uh, Granny Apple Green. You could add in a little bit of Old Olive if you want to add in some shading. It's still going to be very hard to see on the dark cardstock. But you could still kind of see a little bit of your shading, which kind of still looks pretty cool. So I'm just kind of adding a little Old Olive to the other side. So then we'll do, just for these little branches here, we'll do some Early Espresso. Again, I'm not being super careful. I think I might be pressing just a teeny bit too hard, but that's just me being a little crazy. So that was early espresso. So now I'm going to start with the inside first. So I'm going to put a little bit of Daffodil Delight. And then in the center, a little bit of pumpkin pie. Maybe a little bit out to the edge with the pumpkin pie. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right, and now we're just going to move on to, so I did uh, Calypso Coral and Flirty Flamingo. So I'm going to do a little bit more of the Calypso Coral kind of near the center of where the flower would be, more so on the black. And then I'll add to the white. I hope my head is not in the way. I'm not even looking. It is a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Watch my big fat head there, sorry. So then I'm gonna go to the outside with the flirty flamingo. 
but it is a pretty different technique. So again, like I said, we'll also do another one with the crumb cake. So while you're sitting there watching my head attempt to stay out of the way, think about if you would rather use the um, for the bird, I'm sorry, free the bird, free as a bird, good lord, for the birds, that's a Pixar movie, see I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing, or um, by the docks. I think free as a bird will look cool, but also by the dock might look neat with the craft cardstock. And I'm not done the craft, so. So still, even though that was a little light there, it doesn't really give you the exact effect that you want because of the thickness. It still looks pretty neat, pretty cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half just so I can see about where I thought I had it scored. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back so I know where this is. I'm gonna partial die cut this because I think it'll look really cool. So I'm not going to do the entire thing. So this will kind of be opposite of what we did last time. Where's my tape? Let me put this in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna do, take off the end of the flap, okay? And then we'll put a white panel behind. Oh, oh, oh oops. Things falling from the sky. Not unusual in this craft room. I'm gonna put one more piece over here. So I pretty much use this purple tape over and over again until it's uh has absolutely no sticky whatsoever. So in case you missed it, I did do a little infographic video on partial die cutting. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So when you wanna do the partial die cutting portion, we're gonna feed that in. So this is just my regular magnetic platform. I have a regular acrylic pad there. I'm gonna put this one in and kinda of just decide where I wanna cut that about halfway. Go right there, I think it looks pretty good. Hopefully it's in a mostly straight line. And then I'm going to feed this through. So this is just an extra added. You don't really necessarily have to add this. But I think it's going to make it look a little more interesting. So maybe the first time you try it, you could just do it with the regular. And then the next time you could do the partial die cutting to add to it if you wanted to. All right, so let me set this on the side. So right here we have this. We have this. So then I'm going to bring in my trimmer. Now the only thing is going to be a little bit hard. And before I do that, I'm going to grab my ruler and just put a pencil mark. Actually, I'm going to do this one. Where is my regular pencil? Hiding. There. Nope. Okay. So I have this kind of lined up where it should be so clearly when I did my die cutting my uh, card must have been crooked because it's like this <laughs> which is okay it's fine so I'm gonna make a little pencil mark here and right here so you can see my thing wasn't straight, but it's okay. It's not going to matter. So what I'm going to do is this one, I'm going to just snip out with my scissors because it's just a teeny little bit. My snips. So there's that one. This one, you probably could do the same quite honestly. And you know what? Now that I look at it, I just wasn't, it's, I think it's cause I'm so far away. It's actually not that much off. So I'm going to have to erase it. I'm going to just do this one with the snips as well. You could do this with your trimmer, but it's such a small cut. There we go. Let me just erase the rest of this pencil mark. That looks pretty good. All right, so we have the rest of that flowing through. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add 
is obviously you're not going to be able to see anything on the inside. So we're going to have to trim this up. I did just cut a whole bunch of paper. I just basically cut it in quarters. So I take a full sheet of Whisper White and I cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half. That way I have a whole bunch of bases ready if I need them. So I'm just going to trim this down to four by five and a quarter. And then this is going to fit in here nicely. Now, I do think it needs a little something on this side over here. So what we could do is we could go ahead and emboss it. We could um, white heat emboss it. We could clear with a color heat emboss it, which would kind of be really neat. But I think we also need a little some kind of a ribbon there. So I'm going to look and see what I think might be cool. This I really like this linen thread. So I think I'm going to use this linen thread. And then what we're going to do is we will do a thanks. We need lots of thank you cards. So I'm just going to do thanks. And I'm going to grab a piece of Scrap Whisper White. Is that going to fit? Yep, Scrap Whisper White. I'm going to do the same thing. In case you've never done this before, I'm going to prep this with the embossing buddy. And I'm going to turn my heat tool back on. And we'll do this with Granny Apple Green, Versamark, and the only thing I have to grab is clear embossing powder, which we are, you could use that technically for the second one anyway. All right, so I'm going to ink it first in Versamark. Then I'm going to ink it, whoops, in Granny Apple Green. And we're going to just trim this out so I'm not being too specific. We have our stamped image. Then we're going to sprinkle our embossing powder on top of it. This is clear. So you can emboss with any color as long as you stamp with Versamark first. And we're going to heat this. There we go. So then you have a Granny Apple Green embossed word, which is really cute. Let me put this over here. This is a super duper, you can tell by the label, old clear Stampin' Emboss powder. <laughs> but it still has so much in it. I'm not, I can't stop using it. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie this ribbon. And I don't want it to be too tight that it's bowing, so I'm going to try to be cognizant of not pulling too tight. Okay, and let me snip. And then what you could do if you want is you can go ahead and, and uh, fray the edges here. Kind of pull those apart. You could even use the Magnolia, I think we had a Magnolia ribbon pack and I could be dating myself that maybe that is retired, but if you still have it, you can use it. You can pull that, make sure that's fairly, make sure this is a little bit snugger. And then what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to slide this around if I can, if I didn't pull it too, too tight. Hold on one second. I have, you know what I have everywhere is embossing buddy dust. Let me just wipe this off. There we go. Because it keeps getting everywhere. So you could slide this around if you wanted to a little bit, if you want to rotate your bow down. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse, but you could rotate your bow down a little bit more if you wanted to. If you're worried about it moving, you can take a glue dot, just one glue dot, and kind of wad it up. And you could stick it. Oh, come on. And then stick your ribbon down. 
Okay, like that. Again, we are going to put this on the inside. You could stamp this first. I don't really know what I'm going to add to this. So what I'm going to do is just glue it and then I can always stamp something after the fact. But we'll put this here. It's funny, when you have a brand new bottle of liquid glue, it either won't flow or it goops all over you. And that one is brand new because I used my other one to the very bitter end. Thanks to uh, Lisa and John, if you aren't familiar with them, they are, are from Crafter Solutions and they make all these awesome little tools. So there's that. And then what I'm going to do is make sure this is, this is going to stick up just a little bit because of that ribbon, which is okay. I'm going to just trim this out. Just a teeny bit. Go just like that. I'm trying to make sure it's straight. And if you wanted to add a little bit of um, something nicer to this word, you could use your trio punch and you could round the ends of one of these. So that's an option as well. But I'm going to just stick this on with some dimensionals. So I'm just going to grab three dimensionals. Could probably get away with two, but. And the other thing I cannot locate in my office, and I know it has to be here somewhere is my very, very old paper piercer that I have been using to put my, um, take my little backings off of. So that is also going to kind of hold that in place. So I put it in between, but really pretty card. Really, honestly, took me a little bit more because, um, I cut this out and I really didn't have a plan, but this is a really, a pretty quick card. And then this will stay inside because it does completely fit inside your regular envelope so it will ship in a regular envelope you might need a little bit of extra postage just because this these two things stick up a little bit and they might go slightly past the non-machinable but really fun card different colors again I don't feel like we have petal pink you could make your magnolia any color you could do melon mambo that would be a little bit brighter but I think it's a really cool looking card so there is card number one I'm just going to clean these stamps off real quick and then we'll move on to our second card. So free as a bird or by the docks. Just wipe off these stamps. One other thing I wanted to show you that I thought was funny. I did cut my chamois up into fours. And look how disgusting it is. But on the inside, in the middle, it's still clean. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Still deep down inside. It's still bright purple. Apologize, things are falling from the ceiling in here. It's just all my uh, adhesive. I must have shaken the table a little bit too much. So another fun way to use your magnolia that maybe you might not have thought if you have this stamp set. It's a really great stamp set to have. So there is that one. And I'm going to need to keep this all out. Move this over on the side for a moment. And let me look through and see. Free as a bird. Free as a bird. Free as a bird. Free as a bird. Okay, well, I think free as a bird won. So we'll do free as a bird. So this one I'm going to do instead. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to grab my uh, other white embossing powder. There it is. So I'm going to try this one and see if it's any better with the clinging portion. So I'm going to grab. Now for this one, we're going to do this one a little bit different. So what I'm going to do, let me grab one other thing real quick. Because I just want to make sure this is going to fit. That should be good enough. And even if we end up doing the bigger one, let me just make sure this fits on this paper. Yep, it will. Okay. Because I do want to cut it out. We're going to do this one a little bit different. Okie doke. So we're going to do the same thing again to start. 
my birds on there. I'm gonna turn my embossing tool on again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my embossing buddy to cut down on the static. Okay, we're gonna ink up the birds. It is really, really important though for you to clean your stamps off really well after you use Versamark because Versamark is a super tacky ink and it kind of atta attracts all the goopy stuff. So just make sure when you're finished with this that you really clean it off. All right, so I have my white embossing powder. It's a brand new one. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this. I'm gonna do this real quick just so I make sure I'm in here okay so I have my birds sprinkle my white embossing powder so have any of you tried this technique before or is this the first time you've seen it as well if you have a card that you've done that you'd like to share, I would love to see it. You can upload it to the um, Rach the Stamper page here on Facebook. It is absolutely open for anybody if they'd like to add their beautiful creations. So I'm just gonna heat this and set it. Again, when it's dry, it's gonna turn shiny. So make sure I didn't miss any little parts. Nope, looks good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a second and then I'm gonna die cut this. That way it'll be all ready for us to put onto a card. Looks pretty good. So this one isn't anything special. This is gonna be fully die cut. So I'm gonna just Put this in. I'm gonna try not to put um, the straight lines of the die in straight, so I just kind of have it a little bit askew. And crank this through. Okay, give me one second, I just have to take a drink. I don't know if anybody else is now developing any seasonal allergies, but they're starting here, and I'm not even a person that has allergies. Okay, so this is a beautiful die because it does have a double stitched edge. So if you were doing this um, ahead of time, what you could do is you could use this even as your base, and then you could cut some layers smaller in between. You could pop this layer up. So just some ideas. You can use both sides because it does give stitching to both parts. And now we're going to do our birds. So let me grab my pencils out again. I'm going to bring the rest of them out because I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use. So I think we're going to definitely need to do a Bermuda Bay and some Coastal Cabana. How about Melon Mambo we'll do for our flowers this time? Um, let's see. I still really like the Granny Apple Green and Old Olive. We're going to need Espresso for the branch. So we have maybe some bluish birds. Maybe we can do a little bit with the Real Red and Cherry Cobbler. And maybe a little bit of orange and yellow. So I'm just going to put the rest of these on the side for now. And just really quickly, I'm going to wipe this off. I just want to clean the Versamark off this stamp. You could use your stamp cleaning pad too, which is also sadly retiring, but I did buy myself a backup and I have a refill because I think that is probably a very underused, underrated, maybe because people didn't know what it was for tool. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing and this time I'm gonna start with the um, early espresso. Try to keep my head out. So I'm just gonna go over the white where their feet are. 
the little branch pieces here. Might not be quite as um, stark of a contrast doing it on the crumb cake, but I still think it's pretty. And it's definitely something different, that's for sure. Another way to use some stuff that you may have. All right, so I think that's pretty good for this. So that was early espresso. I think the cool part is, though, because the white still kind of shows through a little bit. So that's really pretty. So then I'm going to do the flowers. So I'm going to start with the Granny Apple Green. Kind of just trying to stick to one side. And then I'll bring in the Old Olive for the other side. So I'm kind of, these are much smaller images, so it's a lot easier to get the white and the inside at the same time. So then I'll just do the same thing. So I'm just going to shift my paper to make it easier. Instead of moving myself all around. Uh, one other thing, I have had numerous people ask me about the pencil sharpening, what I use to sharpen my watercolor pencils. And honestly, I use a really old, cheap, I don't know how cheap it was, but I imagine it was pretty cheap, pencil sharpener. Mine was actually a Tupperware pencil sharpener where it actually kept it closed in there. But basically, a really cheap sharpener is better. You don't want to use an electric sharpener because it's going to take too much of it off. And you just want to get enough that you have a point. It doesn't necessarily need to be like a, like a pencil tip because I know when I write with a pencil, I like it to be very, very pointy. And I do like writing with pencils a lot. But with these, you don't want to sharpen too much because you're kind of just taking off the color and throw away some of your money. So you just want to basically have a nice soft edge. It's not supposed to be a pointy tip. Melon Mambo for these flowers, which I think the flowers and the leaves are super striking, especially with the craft. I really like the way these turned out on here. And now we'll fill in lastly with the birds. So, and oh, you know what I forgot to? Might as well do it while I'm at it, the beaks. So we'll do the beaks all in pumpkin pie. Not all birds have orange beaks, but you could make a variance if you wanted to. So this looks really cool with the birds because they have a little bit more space with the body. So I'm going to do two. And this is, this is Bermuda Bay, so this is going to be a little bit darker. And then I'll add in some Coastal Cabana. Not really getting too, too dark with them. This one will be a more of a multicolored. Actually, what I'm going to do with that one, where is my... So, like, this one, this one is probably still sharpened because I don't use it very often the night of navy so it has a factory point but it's going to be kind of hard to get them to be that quite that pointy again I'm just going to bring in a little bit of night of navy on this one so uh, Rainbow Stamper and I went for a bike ride on Monday and we saw the biggest pleated woodpecker I did not realize how big those suckers were I said actually I think I found Woody Woodpecker that's how big he looked but he was really, really pretty. So it was kind of funny how large these were. Now with this one too, one other thing you may notice, and I'm gonna see what other color I have, Pacific Point Balmy Blue. This one, that's the other thing. When you have these really sharp points, and I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna bring it up and hope that you can. It gives you a lot more lines versus like a soft color. So the pointy isn't really necessarily better. So again, I know it kind of feels that way when you're writing with something, you kind of want it to be pointy, but with these watercolor pencils, it almost kind of takes away because it really makes you see lines instead of seeing color. So for this last one over here, we'll do him a little bit different. So it's a little pumpkin pie, and I'm going to do a little bit of real red. This will kind of be more like a cardinal 
best word. And apparently not everybody has cardinals. I didn't know that. So I guess that's more of a uh, United States, maybe even Eastern United States thing. I didn't realize that, but we always say when we see cardinals out back that it's our loved ones visiting. A little bit of cherry cobbler. I kind of went a little bit outside the edge here, which isn't really my fave because you can see nobody else looks that way. I'm going to see. I'm not sure if you can, but I'm going to see if I can erase this just out of curiosity. Well, actually, you can. This is just a mono eraser. So it did erase a little bit. So there you have your birds. You always add a little bit of extra yellow in if you wanted to just kind of give them a little bit of a variation make them very colorful these are now almost turning into tropical birds <laughs> so those i still think look pretty very cute and you can definitely tell between the two there is a pretty good distinction on what the coloring looks like so today I don't have enough time to mount this one to something, but I will finish mounting it because I have to get the rainbow stamper set up for school. I will finish this as a card and I will share it. So I will finish that while he's doing his class. And then I'll put both of these pictures up onto my blog so you can see what the finished product looks like. But I hope you guys will give this a try because it is a really fun technique to do. And also, I mean, honestly, I did go outside the line here. And I was able to erase. So it really is even pretty forgiving. And then another thing you could do to this if you wanted to, just for like a different look, which, man, these, the crumb cake, I didn't think it would be as striking of a difference on the crumb cake, but I really, really like it. And again, it could be because of the colors we used, but I think it really makes like the pink and the green pop. But another fun thing you could do is you can even sponge the edge of this with, um, soft suede before you put it down it would almost look like a vintagey like an antique kind of vintage look but really really pretty cards and again this one the magnolia set has so many nice things you could add to the inside of this as well so you could add any of this to the inside here really really nice you could make this into a sympathy card as well or just a regular old thinking of you card so i hope you guys will give this a try this again was my first time doing it but it was really really fun it was super easy to do. The hardest part was, I will definitely say, stick with your white Stampin' Emboss powder because this held up much better than the other one that I used for this. This one is much better for a detail um, embossing the other brand that I used, which maybe, I don't know if that's why it didn't blow off or else I just didn't hit that area quite as well. It could have been what it was, but I think this Stampin' Up! powder definitely held up better to the penciling as well. So I thank you guys so much for joining me. If you'd like to get any of these supplies and more, you can shop my online store. I do truly, truly appreciate your support. You all are the reason that I do what I do, and you're the reason I'm able to do what I do. So thank you very much for your support, whatever it may be. Even if it's a like, it's a comment, share this with one of your crafty friends that you think would enjoy it. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, you can always click on the subscribe button and then turn on the bell for notifications as well. Um, once again, I am going to go live Saturday. I'm not exactly sure when, so stay tuned, and I will try to give you guys a little heads-up warning. I don't know if it'll be on here or on YouTube, or maybe one of each. You never know. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I look forward to creating again with you guys really soon. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.